everyone and welcome to my channel and welcome to this video. Well, I guess I thought I might share with you today a couple of tips and my painting process of um, how to paint a negative painting and I will be using this Centenaire watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton watercolor paper. Also, I will be using my watercolors. This is a vibrant set and I have prepared here some brushes. I'm not really sure which brushes I'm gonna use. I've just put them here on the side and I will see later on when I start. And also I have made a sketch for you guys. It is available for download from my website. So there is a link in the description box of this video. You can just go there, trace, uh, download it for yourself, trace it and just join in. I know this one is a little bit uh, trickier to sketch. So if you, it's not, the sketching is not the point here. The point is just that negative painting. So I have used this graphite paper to trace it onto my watercolor paper. And you can see I've left a little bit more of the space around the flower. So I do want to do a background there. The background is going to be darker and the flower itself it's going to be lighter so I guess not only we're going to be practicing negative painting we will also be painting white flower so I'm gonna do I'm gonna paint here in sections so uh, I wetted this first part of the paper and I'm just I did um, sped it up a little bit so for those who are impatient want to see the process how I do the negative painting around my uh, flower this is just a sped up process so I'm just wetting my paper going nearest to my uh, flower with detail brush and then adding a little bit of the paint um, further away and then smudging it all with this a larger flat brush and just creating a lighter effect going from the I guess the flower where the background is the darkest into the further uh, away part that it's going to be lightest. So right now, well, I guess I not speeding this up so much. So you will be able for those who want to see the entire process. Well, I guess this will be uh, quite real time, almost a painting process for these petals. So as I said, first, I did wet the paper, I'm painting in sections and I guess I have wetted the part for a couple of petals. Just make sure that you are working in sections because if you're gonna wet all around your flower it is going to I guess dry because you know we are doing details, we are doing slow painting and we do want to have that part around our flower quite wet. I did not go all the way to the petals when I wetted my paper just near to the petal because I'm wetting the paper with a little bit larger brush so I guess if I was going just near to the petal and just uh, fussing and you know around every single each one wetting the paper I guess the part where I wetted first will be drying already so I do want to wet my paper as fast as I can I'm going just near to the petals and outside a little bit further away and when, with this detail brush I am adding paint just nearest to my petal and also when you're using a little bit larger brush depend on depending on the tip you have i guess you might wet the part into the petal and then you won't be able to be so um, precise with painting around the petal and for the colors i'm using green and browns and also a little bit of the blue of course the background can be any color you like that is completely up to you so as I said, first wetted the paper went just around my petals and I do want that part to be the darkest around the petals and then with this little bit larger brush going away from the petals into the background and here I'm adding first some greens and also I will be adding some blues. You can see I'm adding more and more pigment because I really do want that part here to be the darkest. Now adding some blues and for the brush detail brush I'm using this is a Barn Art detail brush. Any detail brush will do just make sure it's a small brush and it doesn't hold a lot of the water it won't drip water around your petals. We do need to use a, a, a brush that can hold a little bit less water so that we make sure that 
we don't have any puddles the puddles there around our petals we do want that part to be i guess to stay quite dry just the paint is added there and now splattering some paint again a little bit of the blues a little bit of the greens and since the paper is still wet it's going to be blending into it and now moving on to the next section again first wetting my paper for that part and you can see right now that i'm not going all the way to the petals and my paint my uh, water is a little bit dirty but that's i don't mind that because i will be adding wash on top anyways so i don't mind if it has a little bit of the paint on it and when i wetted the paper i'm going all the way to the edges of the petals as i said previously just the part nearest to the petals is not wet so all the paint that i have in my brush will be staying there it won't just spread too much i do want that part just near to the petal to be the darkest adding a little bit more of the pigment there greens and browns and using this small brush i can be quite precise and while at it this video was brought to you in partnership with domestica and domestica is an online platform aimed at people looking to learn some new skills or improve existing ones guided by experts who share their knowledge through high quality lessons on domestic website you can find hundreds and hundreds courses in many different categories such as illustration art and craft photography and video design web design writing fashion and many more i myself took a couple of painting and drawing courses and loved how in-depth and detailed they are Domestica offers the possibility to purchase individual core individual course that you like or subscribe to Domestica Plus and get access to over 1000 courses for a very small monthly fee. And for a very, very short while, Domestica has provided a special Black Friday offers for you guys here, my subscribers, followers, dear friends, and more about those offers, awesome offers you can find by following the links in the description box of this video so for those interested i will be at the end of this video giving a couple of recommendations for few courses that i think would be fun to go through in this fall winter and indoor season so if you want to see that just stick around now back to the painting and i'm just finishing up this third part of my painting the same way again and at the end i just splattered some paint moving on to the last section to the last part of my background for the flower again i privetted the paper and this time i'm starting with some blues and greens as i said previously of course you can just pick up any paint you like to paint in your background and you can also make it a little bit more textured if you add a bit more splatters some splatters with just the clean water or you just want to add some splatters with salt that's also fine you can play around with this background i guess i did it quite simply i did not want to fuss too much about it but if you want to play around that's also allowed just splatter some salt and have fun with it again most of the paint i do want around the flower because i don't want my flower to pop so just make sure that your background around the flower is dark enough because you won't have the same effect if you paint it lightly that flower will just not pop finishing up with this large brush i just have just the clean water in that brush i do want to move my paints around with it i did not pick up any paint in that flat larger brush and when the paint was mostly uh, dry i just went around and when i where i thought fit i wanted to add a little bit more of the pigment at the edges i noticed that my left side has quite darker pigments than the right side so i wanted to add a little bit more of the paint just nearest to my flowers petals 
So just adding here and there or a C fit. And also the reference photo that I used for this painting is from Pixels, I believe. So the link for the reference photo will be in the description box if you want to see that and just put next to your painting or, or just watch it while painting if it would make it easier for you there is a reference photo and it's linked in the description box again so now preparing colors for the flower first i will start with painting in the central part of the flower and for that i'm preparing some yellows reds to create some orange and also some brown and greens i did wet the middle part of the flower and just adding uh, going around the edges with some greens and then just next to it picking up and adding some yellow and now I'm just spreading it all over my flower that's the way also that I will make sure that that part is wet but also just add a nice undertone under layer for the for that lower part of the flower I will be painting that one a little bit darker so now adding oranges there and you can see I'm just stopping it with the tip of my brush this detail brush and that's the way I'm creating textures to that central part because I don't want it to be one even wash I really do want to make make it a little bit textured so I'm just stopping in the paint and let it move and spread on its own and the lowest part I do want to make also the darkest to create shadows with brown again using the same thing it is a wet paper I'm painting wet on wet meaning that I'm painting with my paints wet paints on already wet paper and when I was satisfied how it looked for the first layer later on we will be adding a little bit more of the details also to that central part I'm moving on to my petals and those pe for the petals I've mixed a little bit of the blue and some brown to create this gray stone and I'm looking at my reference photo where the shadows are on the petals and that is the place where I'm adding most of the paint even though we are painting white flower of course those shadows and light uh, are creating different tones so that flower is not really completely white even if you look at it in the nature you will see that every object has its lights and shadows so even that white which is completely same it's not looking the same when it's lighted differently when it's in a shade when it's in a shade or shadow and when it's directly exposed to the light so I'm now just creating those shadows actually we are on white flower we are actually painting shadows and those creases that I'm adding the, those lines are actually creases on the flowers that are also darker when hit with a little bit less of the light so just if you did open a reference photo for yourself just look at that reference photo and where you see shadows darker parts you are adding a little bit of the paint we're not going to paint the entire petals we will be leaving some parts of the petals white but also we will be painting especially where those petals are overlapping and when one is behind the other that's the places where we want to add most of the paint that it's going to be the darkest and those that are directly onto the light they're going to be the lightest and we will be adding at least painted there also i wanted to uh, tell you that i did not wet and i'm not pre-wetting my 
uh, petals when I'm painting them. I'm painting on a dry paper, on a dry surface. So just to let you know that I'm not privating. I don't. I do want a little bit more of the control when I'm painting, and I do not want my petals to be wet and for the paint to bleed all around. But I really do want to control these strokes. So I'm not wetting my paper first and also I'm not picking a lot of water in my brush. It's very, very little water with my paints, but they are diluted, but I'm not picking the paint from the puddle. You can see on the, on my palette that it's actually, I guess, not that wet. When I see some water missing on some of the petals, I'm just picking up just the clean water with my brush and adding a little bit more of the water just to spread the paint to make it go a little bit further. But most of the times my paint is quite dry. My brush is quite dry. So see, I'm just looking where my petals are overlapping and just adding the darkest pigments there, especially onto the parts that are underneath, petals that are underneath or there are, that are folded somehow and the lower side. It is visible, but of course it is in the dark, covered with other petals. It's not exposed directly to the light and it is the darkest quite light washes. I'm not using dark pigments, but very, very light, almost transparent tones. Just make sure you're not going onto your paper with dark pigments. So right now I'm adding a little bit more of the paint to the central part. And this time I'm painting on a dry paper and just going over the edge again and using those circular moves with my brush also to create textures on that central part. So just do a very, very teeny tiny circular strokes. Same colors, this time a little bit more saturated than previously. And just looking where, now that every, every petal dried, I'm just looking where I do need a little bit more of the pigment, just to emphasize that some petals are underneath the others, are a little bit hidden from the, from the light source. But the central part around the petals, around the center, is light for every petal. I'm not painting dark there. Some splatters with blue, blue, green, yellow. Just if you want to add those splatters, not. It's completely optional. And right now I'm just adding a little bit more of the pigment to those folded petals. And just on the edge of the fold. I'm looking if I want to add a little bit more of the pigment somewhere and just doing last touch-ups. A little bit of the pigment just underneath the central part to create a shadow and last splatters. And with that, we are done with our painting. And now, as I promised earlier in the video, a couple of my recommendations for the courses. So for the first one, I would recommend this course from Ruth Wilshow, Fantasy Landscapes with Watercolor and Gouache. Next one would be a dreamy watercolor landscape, Painting with Light by, I'm hopefully pronouncing that right, Katarzyna Kmiecik. 
Kmičik, Kmičik. Gorgeous, gorgeous landscapes with playing with light. Third one would be Natural Landscapes in Watercolor by Daniel Pitel Campos. Again, gorgeous loose landscapes. And last one, well, you guessed it, Watercolor Travel Journal. Again, some landscapes from Alicia Aradila. Gorgeous landscapes. And again, playing with some looser painting styles. I really, really do love this, these illustrations and illustrative style. So guys, those are my four recommendations, all, all about watercolors right now. Again, thank you so much for watching, for sticking till the end. And if you haven't still, please do subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that a lot. I hope I will see you next time. Bye!